who has the moves of Muhammad Ali and a mouth to match. His opponent, veteran Georgie Gogo Navarro, returning to his home in Vineland, New Jersey, hoping it's go-go time. At ringside here at the race course. We've done this once before back in 1981. This is main event two, if you will, spelled M-A-N-E. And I'm joined for the boxing portion of this afternoon's card by our boxing expert, Gil Clancy. And Gil, in Kevin Kelly, uh, CBS getting a chance today to show perhaps one of the most exciting lighter weight boxers in the entire boxing world. Yes, and this is, this is an over the weight fight. But Kevin Kelly is a world champion, has a lot of pride, realizes he's on national television. He's gonna give a great effort today. Well, Kevin Kelly is not just an exciting boxer in the ring. He sees himself, uh, himself as an important spokesman for his sport. Last December, Kevin Kelly pounded out a 12-round decision over Mexican Gregorio Vargas to win the WBC featherweight championship. What may have been a dream come true for some is only the tip of the iceberg for this young champion. His mission is to give the lighter weight boxers more of the boxing limelight. So the thing is right now with me trying to bring the money and the power back to the lighter weights, being that Mike Tyson is incarcerated and boxing is uh, right now kind of dead, you could say, in the heavyweight division, Kevin Kelly's job right now is to try to take the error. But first for Kelly is a hungry Georgie Gogo Navarro. Navarro's coming in here for a, hopefully an upset. That's what he's hoping for. It's not going to happen. Um, I think I'm too witty, too smart, and too experienced right now to let that happen. Kelly is also one of those dreaded southpaws, but that makes no difference to the veteran Navarro. I think southpaws, they, they're good fighters, but they're easy to hit. I never saw a softball win a fight by running. And, and, and if he runs, George is going to be right on his case, right in his face, and he's going to hit it with shots he never got hit before. Because this kid knows how to fight a left-handed fighter, and that's a gift. When you step in the ring, you can have a lot of thoughts in your mind that you're going to do this, do that, do this, and boom, that ring sounds, you don't know what you're going to do. So I feel like I'm just going to win, and I'm going to fight him, box him, bite him, I'm going to do whatever I have to to win. No secrets to him. There's a secret to me, though. That's the difference. Which way, which Kevin Kelly are you going to see? The boxing Kelly or the brawling Kelly? The right-hander? The left-hander? So he doesn't know what he's going to see. He thinks he knows, but I don't think so. That's Kevin Kelly, Georgie Navarro, born in Brooklyn, lived in Puerto Rico, and started his boxing career in nearby Vineland, New Jersey. He's got Angelo in his corner. What about Navarro's chances? Well, Navarro is a guy, he hasn't been very active, but he has a lot of ability, has a great left hook, and in my opinion, that's the best punch against the Southpaw. All right, Gil, well, Georgie Navarro and Kevin Kelly, they'll be first. Of course, we've got a great racing. Kevin Kelly from Queens, New York, in a non-title bout against New Jerseyan Georgie Navarro. All coming up. Ready for boxing. Tim Ryan with Gil Clancy, ready for this featherweight bout at an over the weight agreed upon of 128 pounds. The WBC champion, Kevin Kelly, he came in at 129 and a quarter. His opponent, Georgie Navarro, at 129 and a half. He's 28 years of age, two veteran boxers, and of course, Kelly, unbeaten, 38 and 0, 26 knockouts. And let's go now to our ring announcer, Ed Darian. We are live from the Atlantic City race course here in Atlantic City, New Jersey as Garden State Boxing and Caesars Atlantic City proudly present the scheduled 10-round non-title featherweight bout and is approved by the New Jersey State Athletic Control Board, the Honorable Larry Hazard, Sr. Commissioner, the Honorable Jerry Gormley, Chairman. Members of the board include Gary Shaw and Al Daniels, Sr. The judges, Eugene Grant, Shafiq Rashada, and Frank Brunette. In the ring at this time, the man in charge of the scheduled 10 round featherweight bout, referee Double S, Steve Smoger. And now, my good friends, introducing the principals. First, in the blue corner, wearing the gold trunks with the red trim. He tipped in at 129 and one quarter pounds. This young man is has 20 wins, three losses, one draw with seven knockouts. From Vineland, New Jersey, ladies and gentlemen, here is Georgie. Go, go, Navarro. Navarro. 
and his opponent, wearing the teal green trunks with the golden black trim. He too weighed in at 129 and one quarter pounds. This gentleman is undefeated in 38 pro bouts with 26 knockouts. From Flushing, Queens, New York, he is the WBC featherweight champion of the world. Here is, ladies and gentlemen, the undefeated, the Flushing Flash, Kevin Kelly. Kelly. All right, gentlemen, you are giving me instructions of the ring. I want you to obey my commands at all times, respect the bell at all times, and above all, protect yourself at all times. Now touch him up. God bless. Let's go. Steve Smoger with the final instructions for the boxers. Navarro wearing the gold trunks. And uh, Kevin Kelly in uh, kind of spangled blue. There's Steve Smoger, one of the outstanding young referees in boxing. And he is a New Jerseyite. The scoring here on the 10 point must system nine points or fewer to the loser of a round. There can be a 10 10 even round. The doctor does have authority to stop the fight in New Jersey if uh, it becomes necessary. They do have a standing eight count also in this state. Bell cannot save a boxer in any round, including the final round. Big right hand on the chin by Georgie Navarro. Nailed Kelly. So Navarro off to a quick start. He struggled making the weight, which was an agreed upon 128, two pounds over the featherweight limit of 126. That is Kelly's championship weight. Both coming in a little over 129, although just a few days before, Navarro was up an estimated uh, six or seven pounds above the agreed upon weight. I see whether his getting down to the weight affects his performance. Here. Kevin Kelly knew that he was having trouble making the weight. He said, I'm going to pressure him early, make him get tight, and take him out in a later round. Kevin Kelly, 38 and 0, 26 knockouts. Navarro, 20 wins, three losses, one draw with seven knockouts. <laughs> Kelly has defended his championship once against Jesse Benavides, uh, winning a 12-round decision in May of this year. There's a good right hand counter by Kelly. Big right hook. Kevin Kelly. And you know, Tim, when you box a southpaw, it becomes a matter of strategy, how you plan to fight the guy. Every time I had a guy fight a southpaw, I'd make him move to his left, keep his left foot outside the other guy's right foot. It's a safety first measure, and also set the guy up for the hook. Angelo Dundee saying that his boxer not bothered by southpaws. He's been training with a Dundee stable mate. And Angelo claims uh, Navarro does very well against left-handed boxers. Under a minute to go in round one. And a slip there near the edge of the apron by Navarro. No knockdown. And Navarro holding his own against Kelly here in the latter minute of round one. Good exchange, both fighters landed. And Navarro has a swelling under his left eye. And that big right hook by Kevin Kelly. Under the 32nd mark we go in round one. Left hand scored by Kelly. Uppercut gets through from Navarro. And he takes a combination from Kelly. And another. Now back comes Navarro with two free shots. Kelly says they didn't bother him. We're in the final second. For two, scheduled for 10, and Kelly comes out flying here with a, a left-hand lead. Navarro in gold, Kelly in blue. Tim, I'm surprised that there's not much technique in this fight. Both guys are going for home runs just about every punch. No strategy, no moving around, no side to side. Maybe they want to get it over in a hurry because they want to play the exacta here today. Good beat, Tim. <laughs> get a good seat for the Caesars International upcoming. Both fighters are taking hot punches already early in the fight. Kelly with 26 knockouts in his 38 victories. He's not a huge power puncher per se. He's not a one-punch knockout guy, but he's a sharp puncher. And usually most of his victims have come after flurries of good combinations. He's classically 
technically a very sound fighter. Right now, this is a war, though, Tim. One big punch could make this fight. And Navarro, who fancies himself as a Hector Camacho type, who acknowledges as an idol, just took a left hand that staggered him. And another left to the face. Kelly pouring it on. Navarro not fighting Camacho style, as he said, he's been ready to brawl. They both have. He had better start fighting Camacho style. Kevin Kelly looks a little too strong, a little too quick for him. Now the conditioning in Navarro will come into question here, having to take up maybe as much as six or seven pounds in the last few days to make weight. Tim, this is the, the best offensive display that I've seen from Kevin Kelly in some time. Going accurate punches, short punches. Very concentrated fighter, eye on the target at all times. Three minutes to go is round number two. Jorge Navarro was trained by Carmine Graziano, one of the well-known New Jersey trainers for many years until his recent death. And Navarro now in Hollywood Florida. Big right hand by MD. Big right hand by Navarro, Tim. Nailed Kelly coming in. It did, and Kelly backed away after he took that shot. Punch him! Show well here in New Jersey. Go! After taking a staggering shot from Kelly early, scored one of his own late. <laughs> Final seconds of round number two. Tim Ryan and Gil Clancy ringside for round three of this 10 round featherweight bout. The world champion WBC version Kevin Kelly in blue, Georgie Navarro in gold. This is a non-title bout and it has been action packed for the first two rounds. And Tim, for, for lighter weight guys, these guys are fighting like heavyweights. They're both planting themselves, throwing bombs every time. There's no, no science, no... No side to side, nothing. Stop looking, keep marching. Temperatures in New Jersey are approaching 90 degrees today, but there is a very stiff breeze cooling things down. It's not too bad here under the canopy at ringside. Both fighters showing their experience by spinning each other, turning each other around, and both landing solid punches in that exchange. The race card continues here at the Atlantic City race course. You saw the horses on the track getting ready for the next race here today. The fifth race will be Next here in Atlantic City, we'll be bringing you the Budweiser Breeders' Cup Sprint, and you'll also see, of course, the Caesars International, mile and three, three sixteenths on the turf. Big right hand by Navarro again. Right hand lead. Solid punches by Navarro. Good body shots by Navarro on that last pair. And Navarro was stunned by a good shot from Kelly in the last round seems to be fully recovered. Well, Kelly said he was going to put the pressure on Navarro and he sure is walking right in. Using a left hand lead effectively as well. Have to watch Navarro's left hook thing. Oh, the sparkling left hook. That's what Kelly has to be aware of. Navarro with victories over Benny Marquez, Jaime Garza, former world champion, and Hector Lopez. Those are three of his best, but he has not been real active. Out of boxing for two and a half years. And low blow by Navarro. Steve Smoker was right on the case. Barros, uh, we were saying, has had only two fights in the last two years of his boxing career after the layoff. Under the 32nd mark in round three. Dynamite exchange. Both boxers willing to stand there and trade blows. Uh, you said a little 
different than the form normally exhibited by Kevin Kelly and Georgie Navarro. Entertaining fight, final seconds of round three. Round number four of the scheduled 10 round featherweight bout upcoming as the uh, horse racing activity will be continuing here. The horses are on the course getting ready for the fifth race at the Atlantic City race course. And uh, if you're kind of wondering where this ring is, well, we're just adjacent to the racetrack itself and uh, right next to the entrance where the horses come out from the paddock area. You know, Tim, a lot of people ask me, what's the difference between training a fighter and a racehorse? And there's one big difference. The racehorse, you're not going to stable overnight. You know where he is. You can send a fighter out of the gym in good condition, and God knows what he does at night. Comes back the next day sometimes like a dead man. Well, as a race tracker that you are and prominent horse owner, I'd say that your comparisons are always valid. It comes to these uh, two favorite sports of yours, Bill. And we're going to hear from you about uh, your thoughts on the feature race today, too. And don't give anything away. No, I won't. But you right. do want the opinion of an expert, right? Okay, the opinion of an expert. This is the fourth round in the first minute. Navarro in gold, Kelly in blue. It's been a slugfest for two guys who are known as boxers more than big punchers. Georgie Navarro has that good left hand. But Kelly has two good hands. Kevin Kelly has been willing to stay right in front of Navarro in order to give himself the punching angles he wants, and he lands. Good right hand there. Well, true to his words, it, uh, Timmy said he was going to put the pressure on Georgie Navarro, and he sure isn't giving him any rest. Those you know, short punches on the inside by Kevin Kelly. Great balance. Well, a little short with his last combination, and he misses again under a minute, remaining round four. Brilliant blue skies, a little bit of puffy cloud, high temperatures, but a very stiff breeze here in the Yo, Atlantic Kevin, City area. Big left hook, cutting the battle from Mendes' left hook, right on the button. And Kelly took it, didn't blink an eye. In 30 seconds we go. And there's a good combination landed by Kelly. Navarro covers up. Now fires back to the body. Navarro staying right there. Final seconds of the fourth round. Right hand by Navarro, Kelly shrugs it off. Angelo Dundee, famed rival of Gil Clancy and their training days. Clancy now retired to the more cushy life as a TV commentator. Angelo still out there with a lot of outstanding boxers and has only uh, recently taken on Georgie Navarro. In fact, this is the first fight he's been in his corner, although he did organize his uh, last outing against Eugene Speed in France. Angelo feels that uh, Navarro is a little more settled down a, a fighter since uh, coming to join Angelo in Hollywood, Florida. And I think we're seeing some of that here today. And you know, Tim, uh, we know Navarro had trouble making the weight, but the weigh-in was at 6 o'clock last night, which means he's had plenty of time to drink liquids and put a lot of weight back on. He's probably right now about 135, 136 Good pounds. left hand by Kevin Kelly, and a right behind it knocked Navarro back. And you know, Kelly, despite the fact that Navarro is the heavier guy, Kelly looks like the bigger man. Classic build for a featherweight by Kevin Kelly. In fact, a little larger than most in terms of his frame, broad shoulders. Could turn out to be one of the outstanding fighters at this point in the history of the game. He's a great spokesman, and he loves to market boxing and market himself. He, to me, he's the best guy to come along for publicity since Muhammad Ali. He's just great, and he does a lot of good in the community. 
and I see signs of wear and tear. Now Navarro is starting to slow down a little bit. A little puffiness under that left eye that came in round one. And, uh, Navarro, nothing too serious in terms of uh, vision or damage. And Tim, you notice how focused Kevin Kelly is? He knows where he is all the time. Always has his eye on the opponent. Under a minute to go in round five. Yes, that commented on that er earlier, uh, Gill, and, and that's it's just terrific to be able to be that concentrated throughout the length of a fight. Great asset. How'd you like that move, Tim? <laughs> How'd you like that one? What was that? Oh, good shot by Navarro. Caught him on the right uppercut. Navarro hanging to the body. Go! Under 30 seconds we go in round five. Scheduled for 10. Me! Kelly very Me! relaxed in there, even when he takes a big shot. That's been the difference in the fight thus far. Uh, Kelly just shrugs off in Navarro's punches, and he hurts Navarro when he hits him. Final seconds of the fifth round here from Atlantic City Racecourse. Down goes Navarro. Navarro hit the canvas with about four seconds left in the round. So Navarro now cut under the left eye, goes to his corner having beaten the count. It continued after the bell, but Navarro took quite a shot. He butted you. Well, you butt him. Don't take no shit from this guy. Let's take a look at the replay. This is in the final seconds. Little, little shot, shot underneath. Up a good. Sharp, there's the shot right there, that right hand. You can see, even though Navarro threw a punch after that shot from Kelly, that was the punch that sent him to the canvas. Tim, I think it was that last straight left hand. No, I think he was already on his way, Gil, but certainly the left hand finished him off, sent him down to the canvas. That one there was the real damaging blow. You can see him starting to lose his footing here. And then that left hand from Kelly. And there is a, now a slice under the left eye of Georgie Navarro. Angelo Dundee, one of the really good cutmen, went to work on that. It's not at a damaging place for vision, of course. It's under the eye. We're into the sixth round. And now Navarro is starting to move on his legs. Started to use those legs, which I thought, think he should have been doing a lot earlier in the fight. And down goes Navarro again here early in the sixth. He may not get up from this one. Navarro struggling. He's going to try. And he's on his feet. Steve Smoker taking a close look at it. Three knockdown rule does apply in New Jersey. If he goes down again, the fight is over. Navarro wants to continue. And he wings. Kelly jumps right on him. Tim, it's a three knockdown rule. Three knockdowns in one round. In one round, pardon me. Thank you, Gil. Three knockdown rule in one round. It would only be two in, here in the sixth. Down he goes. So that's the second in the sixth. Now Steve Smoger is going to stop the fight anyway. So a knockout victory in the sixth round by Kevin Kelly. As Georgie Navarro hit the canvas twice here in the sixth after being knocked down in the final seconds of round five. That is the 27th knockout victory for the WBC World Featherweight Champion, Kevin Kelly from Queens, New York. And we'll be back for the official word on the fight and to talk to the champion, Kelly, in just a moment. We're back at Atlantic City Racecourse but the WBC featherweight champion, Kevin Kelly, an impressive sixth round victory over Georgie Navarro here at the Atlantic City Racecourse today. And Kevin, uh, congratulations. Uh, three knockdowns uh, scored uh, by, uh, by you during this Ladies bout. Let's uh, get Ed Darien's official of announcement. 56 seconds of the sixth round and a winner by a knockout. Still undefeated and still the WBC featherweight champion of the world, the flushing flash, Kevin Kelly! Kelly! And how about a nice round of applause for Georgie Go Go Navarro? Let's hear it for him.
Great job, Steve. Okay, Kevin, uh, Kevin uh, Georgie Navarro came out. I, 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 to us, it was kind of a surprising start. It looked like he wanted to go toe to toe with you for a guy who uh, fancies uh, Hector Camacho as his style master. Were you a little surprised by his attack? No, uh, I've been sparring with Larry Barnes, who is no fear, and also my no fear endorsement back at home I just received. I knew, I trained with a guy who is constant pressure. Larry is constant, constant, constant pressure. And you'll see when he can put him on CBS also. He's, <laughs> he's constant pressure. So what happened was I was training for constant pressure, but I knew Navarro boxes. We knew it very well. So at times I was trying to switch up my style. You can see I trained with a slugger, a banger, a guy that kept coming and I practiced boxing him. In case Navarro came out like that, he did, and he came for what he, what he saw, is what you've seen, is what I came to do. Well, you were very well prepared and very confident. Let's go back into the action here. Is this the beginning of the sixth round? This is the first uh, knockdown in the, at the end of round five. Look yeah, like well, a, I was at this time, I'm just trying to put my punches together. Phil wants me to let my punches go. I'm not being the flesh and flash here. I'm being kind of a Larry Barnes, Kevin Kelly type. I'm trying to make a miss and counter. My speed was definitely there, my accuracy is there. The Benavides fight made me sharp for this fight. This is why I was trying to do things that I didn't do in the Benavides fight, which was be quick, fast, and elusive. And at the times, the thing I want to get credit for is my defense. Look at this, make him miss and make him pay. That's what we trained for, make him miss and make him pay. We knew Dundee was a great trainer, and Dundee had watched me fight before, and knew that I was an exceptional well box. I could box, I can slug, I can brawl. Only thing we tried to do with Benavides, that we, did, we, that we tried to do here, we tried to knock Benavides out. I didn't go for the knockout here, and I got it. So that's Ke a big difference. Kevin, uh, uh, certainly you're one of the most impressive fighters at the lighter weight. You made it kind of your mission to focus uh, on, on guys of your size. Uh, still, for you to continue to make your mark, you've got to take on all of the big names that you can find, perhaps uh, try to unify the featherweight crown. What, what are your plans now? Well, right now, our plans are I'm leaving it to my management, sports placement services, to make the certain decisions. But the biggest thing is not to make them the biggest names, to make Kevin Kelly the biggest names. They're going to have to chase Kevin Kelly. Kevin Kelly's going to miss the TV, miss the personality, and miss the money bags. They're going to have to come and get me. <laughs> the thing is, they're going to have to come and get the flush and flash. It's the wrath of the flush and flash. It's a new era in boxing, yes. and you are looking no at fear. it. All right. No Kevin, fear, baby. No fear from Kevin Kelly, the WCBC featherweight champion of the world, and certainly a breath of fresh air in the boxing game. He can fight, he can talk, and I think we'll be seeing him again. We'll be back at Atlantic City Racecourse in a moment. The race course, uh, we're happy to report Georgie Navarro is fine. He is up and has just left the ring. Uh, he was beaten soundly by the WBC featherweight champion, very colorful Kevin Kelly. Well, we've got a little more boxing to show you before we get to our horse racing program here today. Two weeks ago in Atlantic City, a fight that did not...